Can you frame how challenging this moment is for this Fed chair? Well, I think it's, it's very challenging for two reasons. One, it's a momentous time in the economy with both significant uncertainty about inflation and recession. Two, it's important for him and, and communication. I, I actually have a old whip inflation now button here from the Ford administration. And I think Chair Powell needs to do a bit better in expressing more some candor about the past, not necessarily a mea culpa, but for what happened and about the future of what it's going to take, as well as talking about the difficult path of getting inflation all the way back down to 2%. Getting it down to 4 may be straightforward, getting <clears throat> it to 2 much harder. Glenn Hubbard, the arc of Republican economics represented by so many here at Jackson Hole is that the system will solve itself. Is a general statement, is the religion of supply side economics or the religion that the American economy can heal itself, has that failed? I don't think so. I mean, the economy has a lot of self-equilibrating mechanisms. The question is over what time period and in the presence of such large shocks. I think policy still has a role to play. It had a role to play in the COVID pandemic. And the Fed just can't wait to let inflation work itself out. So, uh, Dean Hubbard, Glenn, what's your view on our debate that we were just having about whether uh, this Fed chair will speak to markets, what he will say about their enthusiasm about some sort of pivot or some sort of pause in uh, Fed rate hikes? Well, I think the message he could give, going back to the point I said about candor, about where we have to go, is what it would take to reduce inflation. I, I don't think he's literally going to lecture the markets and say the stock market's too high or something like that. But I think he could outline a path that says we have work to do. Getting that work done requires tighter financial conditions. You know, speaking in general terms, I, I think that would be wise to make that kind of communication to the public and to the markets. There was, a, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal, I keep mentioning this because it really caught my attention, about whether we have seen the end of the low rate policy. This is what PIMCO has put out there. And the possibility of inflation remaining high for a longer period of time due to a deglobalization, due to structurally higher commodity prices, due to a lack of investment over the past few years. Do you buy into this theory? And if the Fed does, what does that mean in terms of how high rates have to stay and for how long? Well, I, I think there's certainly something to the fact that we have demographic changes, structural changes, globalization changes. I'd be hesitant to draw straight lines and say that's just going to be permanent, but I think it's definitely something to watch. To my mind, the concern for the Fed ought to be is probably two worlds, one in which we keep inflation expectations anchored around 2%, the other in which they go off kilter. I think that's the challenge the chair faces, and you'll have to, quote, do what it takes to make that happen. 